WEMF. Of the push carts in Boston. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that don't like the newspapers to have uh, the free mailboxes, which is, you know, about community printing press. We want more press. We don't want uh, less of that. But this is, the, they're that group. They are, I just, um, you know, and, and, and discussing with them this week, I talked to you on the phone. You were open, honest, like really honest about everything. They were not. I tried to reach out to them. I had uh, their conversation. They wouldn't answer any of the questions I had. They have no basis for why they're opposing this. They have no answer beyond this little boilerplate paragraph that they sent out. We don't know who voted yes, how many of their members. They won't answer to the press. I mean, it's just, I, I'm just shocked by uh, this group that they're getting, ta like they're taxing the local businesses in this district. Um, mm -hmm. And there, it's like that's like the mafia. Didn't the mafia want to tax local businesses? And now they're telling us that we can't have medical marijuana down there. We can't have one location for patients in Boston. This is the third time. Your plan is amazing. You have uh, secure access for patients to leave, so no one even knows that they were in the building. Um, you, you, you guys are uh, security experts. Like you said, you're right outside the DEA in Washington, D.C. If there's going to be eyes on you, there are eyes on D.C. I mean, everyone's there. If there's an issue, you guys have success. This is what's bothering me. Um, we had Stephen D'Angelo and Andrew D'Angelo try to come in. They were kicked out. They're experts. You guys are experts. Why does Boston uh, want to go the bigot route? I think that the citizens need to come out on Tuesday. Uh, there's a zoning meeting. This Tuesday, June 2nd at 9.30 a.m., room 801, Boston and City Hall. If you're a Boston resident, you need to show up and speak out and support the dispensary. Well, we do have um, we do have numbers of people, hopefully, who will be there. But I will tell you, we would love to fill the room because uh, the bid will uh, be out in full force. Now, you, you mentioned before that you've tried to reach them and to try to get some answers. Uh, we've tried to get some answers also, and uh, they have told us they don't want to talk about the patient. Don't try to make them feel guilty. That has been the response when I've said to them uh, on an individual basis and to Rosemary, uh, who, by the way, I've known for 40 years and have worked with her before, when I've said to her about, uh, please, let's talk about the thing that counts, the patient, she said to me, don't make me feel guilty. I don't want to talk about the patient. I said, well, what do you want to talk about? Yeah. We want to talk about the fact we don't want you here. Yeah. Why? Why? Why answer we the don't want, Because we don't want you here. Yeah. That's why. Yep. And you know something? We own the buildings. Yeah. And we don't want you here. Exactly. Period. Yeah. It's about power. And it's bigotive tree, too, because, like, um, you know, you can have 100 liquor licenses there, but you can't have one medical marijuana dispensary in the most regulated market in the nation. This isn't some, like, you know, California style. This is totally over the top almost. It's what I've been complaining about. The regulation is almost too much, too onerous, too select, you know, but you guys made it through and you have the right plan, like, at least meet with you. It's unbelievable the situation as it stands with uh, Boston BID. I can't believe that they're doing this to the small mom and pop restaurants that are they're representing, too, because I don't think that all of those restaurants share the same opinion as the as the leaders of this group i really don't well we've tried to talk to the leaders we've tried to talk to them as a group they they opposed us prior to uh even meeting with us they we finally did secure a meeting with seven out of the 56 uh board of uh board of directors and advisory board they have i think 56 between the, the board of advisors and the board of directors and we were able to meet with seven of them and um, nothing uh, really came of it, other than the fact that they do not want us in around them in their neighborhood. And so, therefore, those people that suffer from PTSD, uh, those people that suffer from uh, chemo, from cancer, from uh, epilepsy, from all of those kinds of things, cannot and will not be able to get the services that we are willing to offer. And by the way, something very important that we should all realize is the fact that we have bent over backwards for them, even to the point where we said that in 2016, if the government votes in or if the state votes in or the city votes in recreational marijuana, we will not sell 
recreational marijuana out of 21 Milk Street. We will not do that. We will forevermore be medical marijuana out of 21 Milk Street. Hallelujah to that. So we were very clear about that. You know something? We didn't move the meter. The, the meter, the dial didn't move at all. Yeah. They, didn't, they did not hear us. They were not willing to listen to us. And um, it, it has just been, it's been an incredible situation. I've been involved with Boston for over 55 years, and I have never, ever seen anything quite like this. Yeah, it's reefer madness. It's uh, bang your head against the wall, because I had the same experience with them writing the emails. Like, I was like, why am I bothering at this point? Mm-hmm. It was just, it's unbelievable that a large group like this could be so, in Boston, it, with with how many percent? I don't know if it was sixty six or seventy, but it was seventy two percent. Yeah, seventy two percent voted yes of the voters, mm-hmm. and we're we're mm-hmm. talking about this. We're talking the third right. time in Boston. This will be the third dispensary that we don't get in Boston. Yeah. If this isn't doesn't how how long do the patients have to wait in Boston? Perfect location. You guys are the perfect operators for you. You're t- tested. You you've gotten through this whole program. I just really hope you open. I hope people show up on Tuesday. Um, tell us about some of the people that have spoken out because I know there's a, a a father that uh, uh, we've had numbers. We've had for numbers us. of uh, patients advocates who have spoken out. We've had uh, people with epilepsy. We've had uh, people that have suffered from uh, debilitating uh, conditions such as PTSD, such as cancer, uh, such as MS. And uh, it just, in Greenfield, uh, they spoke out. Um, not that they had to, because, again, we were approved. But at various meetings at a uh, downtown meeting that we had at the Mar- in theater, uh, we had some patients who spoke. Uh, we had a um, we had a friar from uh, St. Anthony's who uh, is suffering from a very rare, uh, very rare condition called Ogilvy's condition, which um, is uh, aside from everything else, it's a condition where he's allergic to uh, being able to take any pain medications. This man suffers 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and the only thing that will help him is medical marijuana, and he can't get it. He has to go to Florida because that's where his family is, and hopefully that somebody will gather some for him in Florida, and he's able to get it. And he can't take it back to Massachusetts because it's illegal to take it across state lines. Now, St. Anthony's Parish is in the district. Their neighbors, they're within a block and a half from us. Yeah. Yet the bid feels that they don't want to hear about him. Yeah. Yeah. They, they don't lay the guilt on me. Don't make me yep. feel badly. And there's brother that, Quinn. Is that the same? Is that him? Father Quinn? Uh, Father Quinn, yes. That's mm-hmm. him, Father Quinn. Wow. Right. Actually, Yvonne Abraham happened to have written a, a column about him. But he, he is not the, he's not the exception. He's the rule. This is what we're facing. Oh, yeah. We've got 50,000 oh, yeah. patients in Suffolk County. Yep. Yep. And by the way, this isn't about the money. Because you know what? We want to make money. We could open a dispensary for $250,000 in Colorado and uh, be recreational and make a fortune. This is about the mission. We've made our money. Well, I made my money in the businesses that I was in in advertising, public relations. I did fine. I was very successful. Didn't have to do this. But I saw the suffering, as did my partners and the people that work with us. They saw the suffering. So that's really, it's, it's not about trying to make the money. It's trying to help people who are suffering from this. Um, BBJ, Boston Business Journal, uh, this week has an article on this. And according to D'Angelo, how accurate it is, I have no idea. But he's saying that it costs $14 million uh, before it's all said and done to open up a dispensary. Yeah. All I can say to you is that it certainly costs seven figures. Yep. And you know what? We could fold our tent and go somewhere else. But we're not going to fold our tent. If, God forbid, we lose on Tuesday, we're not going to go away. Good. We'll Good. find a way to be there, yeah. to be at 21 Milk Good. Street. Good. We're not, we're not going to hang out and, 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 just, uh, and just fold under the pressure of a group of people 
that don't feel comfortable with having a medical marijuana dispensary there. And, I, and I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean to wave the flag and go on and on, but it, it, has, been, it has been something that obviously uh, we're extremely passionate about. Yeah, and we can hear it. Um, and so. that, that's why, I mean, again, that's why you should be allowed to open. It's so obvious in the situation. You, you, you got a lease. You got a place, you know, you, you're set up to go, you have the history. And the guidelines and regulations yeah. are so strict, yeah, absolutely. are so by the book, and we have only gone into very highly regulated uh, states, and I can tell you right now that Massachusetts is highly regulated, and, uh, you know, everybody wants to put blame on the politicians, everybody wants to blame the DPH, but you know what, right now, You've got to look and see where the real blame is. The blame comes from a group of businessmen who say, not in my neighborhood, and it's funny. not yeah. even their neighborhood. Well, I think in the past it was the DPH, but I think uh, hopefully with a new governor uh, taking action and helping, helping hopefully get these places open, I think it's a little bit better there. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely, though, in this situation, yeah, it's exactly that. It's these moneyed interests telling us what we can have in our neighborhood. Um, you know, local level is always different, so um, I think it's important to note that, uh, you know, if patients are going to speak up for patients. There are things like, you know, th in this case, it's so obvious. This group needs, to, like, I, I, I'm calling for this lady to lose her job. You know, Rosemary shouldn't be in charge if this is the, the way that they operate. You know, I'm saying that, I, you know, from EMF and, you know, writing as a column in Dig Bo you know, I'm a columnist, you know, I'm willing to take any heat I get for that. You know, and I, I don't call for people to lose their jobs generally, but this is just, this is bigotry, and I've, uh, we just had enough. I know I have Nicole Snow, who uh, kept saying that to me, Mike, this is all bigotry, all, always like bringing up the word bigotry, and, and it's such a good explanation on what we deal with. It is bigotry, right. isn't it, Nicole Snow? Yes, it is. Unfortunately, we're treated like second-class citizens, we're patients, and, you know, uh, Dennis Cunion, I, I was at the... Um, the Midtown Cultural uh, right. mm -hmm. meeting uh, to see you got your presentation from Patriot Care, and it was wonderful. And you really turned some residents. And it was really unfortunate that the Boston bid didn't want to see it, be a part of it, or even meet you guys. So I really right. think well, that's that. What's happened. And you know, I I appreciate um, your willingness to continue fighting for patients because you know if, if we do lose Tuesday it's not going to be because the patients and the residents didn't want it, it was because something some more, power players some power. didn't care about people right. they cared about themselves more than they do about their community and didn't well, look Nicole, at the fa yeah it's, be it's because of people like Nicole it's because of people like Mike that you know what we're not going to lose Good. We are not going to lose. We are not going to fold our tent and go home. Yeah. Now, Tuesday is just, uh, you know, it's another day. If for any reason uh, the ZBA does not see fit to uh, allow us to have our license, again, we're not going to fold the tent. We can't do that. We owe it to the patients. We owe it to the Nicoles of the world who are the patient advocates who work so hard. We owe it to people like Mike who work so hard to make these patients understand how hard we're working for them. And, and I, I have no idea. I can't tell you, as a fairly intelligent person, I think, why the bid is doing what they're doing. I, have no, I, I can't answer the question. Let, let me ask you about that, because the seven who showed up, you said that, that seven came to you, these top you know, board executive right. the list that we have there. Do you know any of the seven? I mean, was Rosemary there? Um, uh, who yes, were the Rosemary others? Was there. How did they act about, you know, you can usually tell by body language and their faces and the questions and how interested and friendly they are. Were any of them friendly to us on, on, or to your case? Uh, you know what? Uh, there were a couple, yes, that were friendly, but they were also guided by uh, some of the uh, more, or some of the larger developers. There was a very large developer who was there who uh, did not even take the meeting seriously. 
and uh, who made a, a, a number of uh, what I would call disparaging remarks. And I'm not going to tell you who that is. I'm not going to start naming names. Well, maybe I'll start naming not... names because we got <laughs> a list of do for you. we got a list of developers here. They're all uh, to me donkeys at this point if they haven't mm-hmm. spoken out. Yeah. I mean, well, that... I'm not in a position, nor will I ever be in a position, nor do I want to be in a position. Uh, I'm I'm not a news person. I, I'm somebody who just wants to do. I want to be on the right side of right, and that's where I'm at right now. Yeah, I'm more of a t- more the, uh, the attack dog today than I am the news person. Well, again. I don't blame <laughs> you. I don't blame you, and okay. I don't blame Nicole. Nicole faces this every single day. 